record this computer. Voila, and then I will save it for us. So as you know, Tommaso, I am in Geneva, Switzerland. Um, I also have origins in Italy. Uh, my grandpa was from Sicily and uh, I lived in Rome for a year. I live in Geneva, speak French, English, German, and a bit of Italian. And I spent almost 15 years in corporate. I was a management consultant with KPMG before becoming partner, I switched, did some lifestyle changes and became a health and wellness coach. I'm an ICFPCC, I'm board certified. I work exclusively in the corporate sector. My business has grown from workplace well-being to C-suite. So my coaching is C-suite, but it is around, this will link with you, I'm sure, uh, resonate with you. Um, a lot around C-suite, a lot around well-being, alignment, a lot about personal um, empowerment. And I just published my first book on the 50 plus generation like you and me and what we do with that tranche of life. So that's quite an interesting piece to add. The program I am, I am sharing with you, and this is week two of four, um, I will show it to you now, I'll be sharing my screen, has been created in the workplace in multinational organizations. My goal is to help coaches to have a, a, a slide deck that they can go into the workplace with and deliver it so they become known in the workplace and then they can be hired as a coach. That's usually the way I roll it out. It's been delivered and I'm so happy to have you here to people like you. So it resonates with people like you in corporate. Let me share my screen and let's get started. Um, the, <clears throat> oh, I have a very full screen today, you guys. Let's see, I'm back, here we go, slideshow from the start. So it's the Live Coach Training Program. It's called Wealthy You, the Coach's Solution to Workplace Wellness. So we are week two. Last week, we talked about my food, my stress, what's the link? Today, we're gonna to be talking about my body, my sleep, time to wake up. I think Tommaso next week will be a really relevant session for you. My purposeful alignment resilience that lasts, but I think they all go together. And week four is something that I will give to everybody at the end of the course, which are proposals of this work and ideas on pricing and how we can use this work. Um, I will only be giving the slide decks to people that choose to purchase them at the end of the program, but all of the videos and the proposals will be available for everybody that attends the four sessions or that listens to the recordings. So again, again, for your benefit, Tommaso, because the other people were on the call last week, what you'll be seeing today can be delivered in as short as 45 minutes or as long as a half a day. And as we go through the session today, which is the slide deck that we would use to raise awareness about who you are as a coach, what you can provide, and this is all around health and well-being, which is a great way to get into organizations today, post-COVID. Um, we talk about today, I'll ask you how we can deliver the things differently. How can we shorten it? How, where do we coach? How do we make it longer? Are we all ready? Yes. Yeah. Okay, my body, my sleep, time to wake up. What we're going to discover today are the primary links between stress and physical activity. My focus on all of these, these webinars to deliver in the workplace is managing stress. That is the issue that we have today in the workplace. So we're not going in there to teach them about physical exercise. I'm not a gym coach. We're not going in to teach, I'm not a sleep doctor. We're going in to say, understand the effect this has on your productivity, your performance, your alignment, and your well being and your stress. That's how we deliver in the workplace. That's the message that the students want to hear as well, Felice. The primary links between stress and sleep and answers to your questions and smart goals. I'm not explaining goals to you. I'm not here to teach you coaching. You're great coaches. I'm here to give you the materials to deliver your coaching with. So, Again, well-being, we look at four dimensions of well-being, food, exercise, sleep, and mindfulness. 
Though we teach them separately, I think of them as gears of a watch that work together. They're all intertwined. And you will understand that once you listen to week one, week two, and week three. So this is a program that can be delivered in three times in a workplace, over three weeks, or three half days, or you could break it down into an annual 12-month program once a month. You can think of many ways of doing this. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on mindfulness. This is a repeat from last week. But every time we get together to do something, I have people stop and take a breath. I think you're all used to this. We stop to identify where we're at. Stop for a moment, take a deep breath, observe what you feel so you can proceed. Again, I'm not gonna spend time on it, but when I'm in the workplace, this is a great place to tell people to turn off their phones, take off their shoes, and actually be in the present moment for the hour, 45 minutes, two hours we have together. Just stop me if you guys have any questions or you have anything to say. I'm gonna move fast over sections we already did last week so we don't repeat, but in the slide deck, I put them both weeks in case we just deliver one, okay? We cool with that? Yeah. Great. We always do an emotional check-in. How are we feeling? What is the mood of the day? Because by actually naming the way we feel when we start out, um, we can actually better manage that feeling. And again, this makes us rather than being, I, I'm stressed. We want people to say, gee, I notice I'm feeling stressed. And when we take that perspective, we can actually stand up and manage the stress. We become agile rather than fragile. Tomasa, you're gonna to keep that one when you go back to work. Becoming agile rather than fragile. Watch the difference. Oh, I'm stressed. Or, hey, I notice I'm feeling stressed. So what can I do about that? It's a difference between embodying a feeling and actually giving it a name and addressing it. Again, we've all learned this in coaching, so I won't spend time on it. Tomaso, for your benefit, in the slide deck, under each slide are all of the references that we might need to defend or to argue or to find extra resources for each item we look at. Again, we did this last week. I'm running through it very quickly. What is stress? I would ask the audience. They would tell me what it is. We did it last week. I'm not going to go through it a second time. Stress is the number one proxy killer and 60% of all human illness. Again, we went through it last week. It's the number one workforce issue. What percentage of people are stressed? 70 to 80% with all of the details. We went through all this last week. I won't go through it again. How do people cope with stress? And now we look at the stress effect. I'm gonna start here. We understood last week that stress affects our hormones. Adrenaline, cortisol, sugar, insulin, heart, digestion, breathing, immunity, muscles, brain power, fight or flight. Remember last week, those of you that were here, we looked at the effect that food had on all of these stressors. Hanae or Ellen or Phyllis, do you remember anything about the food link with stress from last week you'd like to share? Or that maybe since last week you were thinking about? Anything popped up? Um, yeah, I, I actually did talk with Mira about the, the, the apple juice because I was a, a really like funny example. I mean, something that I, we both thought like, wow, this is so good, you know? And, and actually I realized sometimes Mido, when my, my partner, sorry, when, when he's stressed at work, he usually drinks like two glasses of apple juice. Right. And, and, and then he would get even more like- Of stressed. course. Yeah, and, and, and we were discussing this and, and uh, like, it was a funny kind of like, we didn't take it like, wow, it's, it's super unhealthy, but we just realized, right? And we, 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 we got conscious about it. So now we're not doing it anymore. <laughs> Really good observation. And that's the point, isn't it? The point here is to actually observe and see the way these things affect our stress. Ellen, anything come up for you? Thanks. 
Yeah, sorry, just some muting. Yeah, and very similar, right? The one of my takeaways was uh, towards the end of the session, we were talking about smoothies and how a lot of us have this perception of, oh, I'm on the run today and I'm going to have my smoothie. And you know, for me, it really hit home because it's uh, my world personally. I'm a smoothie fan. And also, I support a lot of clients that that's the only way they can have a meal during the day. But just, um, you know, adding, considering a few other layers to their smoothies um, and reaching out to, to different recipes that could incorporate fiber and, and, and trying when we can to, you know, go back to taking the time to crunch that apple and mindfully eating it. Yeah, yeah. great, great. Yeah. So again, Tommaso, I'll let you listen to that video so you can up, up on that. We're not going to talk about nutrition and food today. Today, we're going to try to understand what are the stressors that we have in life and how, what is the link with physical exercise? So this is all new, this is today's session. So this is the question that I would put out to my audience in the workplace. So, all right, you're a bunch of stressed corporate people here. Why should you move your body? And now I'm gonna challenge you, all of you, give me each at least two reasons why you should be moving your body. What does this have to do with your corporate productivity? Tommaso, your line is open, you start. Give me two reasons why move your body. I feel better, uh, mental health, uh, more productivity. Great. Why do you think you feel better? Any idea? I usually walk and jog every day. And hey. uh, my experience is that uh, after I've been walking one hour, uh, I feel much better because uh, during that one hour, I don't know what happened in terms of uh, chemistry, but the results is that uh, I am more relaxed, more, uh, uh, I feel better. I feel yeah. better. I, I am ready to go to work. Uh, and so. Well, I will tell you. These what happens yes. when you walk, yes. actually all of these things go down. Yes. When you're stressed, your adrenaline, your glucose, it all goes up. And actually when you walk, you bring them all down. Yes. And that's, a, that's the chemistry. And Ellen, I think that you wanted to mention something about the hormones that kick in when you start skating. Mm. Yeah, it's just that release of, of endorphins, right? And it just, you know, takes the stress off. I think that's why you hear a lot of athletes say, uh, you know, they just bring their, you know, when they go and do their sport, everything evaporates and, the you know, all their issues go away and they're in the moment. And I think that's one of the reasons. Do you know the main endorphin that's released when we move our bodies, Ellen? Not off the top of my head, no. It starts with sero and ends with tonin. Oh, serotonin. Serotonin. So let me just ask you all. Serotonin affects three things. The first thing it affects is mood. It puts you in a good mood. It affects two other things. Does anybody know what the two other things the serotonin affects? Again, it'll be in the notes. Okay, it affects your appetite and it affects your sleep. So now we're starting to see how these gears work together. Hanae, can you give me two reasons to add to this, why move my body? Well, apart from physical well-being, I mean, I'd like to, to, to keep, uh, well, not a good shape, but like a, a, a functional body. And, functional uh, body, yep. Yeah, and I would say also um, it does help me a lot with digestion. I don't know if it's... The, digestion if is one of them. And look, look, if you go back to the stress page, digestion is one of those things that Absolutely. shuts down under stress. So you can automatically start to make these links between, yeah, it helps your digestion. So it actually helps reduce the stressor because when you're stressed, your digestion shuts down. In, in the time of this image, which where the mammoth was the stressor, the digestion stress shuts down so you can spend all that energy fighting this mammoth, getting rid of the stress. 
So if you exercise, you actually bring that down. Perfect. Felice, would you like to add two reasons why move my body? Uh, you're, you're muted, sweetheart. Okay. I think one is uh, blood circulation, which uh, creates more energy. Yeah. Uh, and also um, exercises closely related to breathing. And it was also, uh, it's also related to the mindfulness issue as well. And it activates the vagus nerve. Which, yes, uh, thank gives us you. a lot of good things. <laughs> yes, and the vagus nerve, by the way, is our key to productivity. So as we breathe, as we oxygenate, which we do more when Tomasa was running and walking, you've got more oxygen feeding your brain. You think faster and smoother and quicker. And that vagal nerve attached to your diaphragm actually puts you in the mode of being your most productive self. Coaching moment, you could spend 45 minutes on that, have their whole coaching group brainstorm this, write it on a flip chart, come up with lots and lots of reasons. That I leave to you, that's your coaching moment. I give you two each, and then I give them all these reasons. Moving your body, your cortisol goes down, your adrenaline goes down, your serotonin goes up, your immunity goes up. Do you think immunity is a stressor? or lack of immunity is a stressor, major body stressor, reduces your stress, helps you sleep better, improves your mood, improves all illness, makes your brain work faster, gives you more focus, your metabolism goes up, you burn more sleeping if you exercise during the day. It is the number one anti-ager physical exercise. So anybody over 50, when I'm working with the C-suite, they often will complain about focus and they don't go for well-being coaching. They come because they're not being productive at work and they're whatever. And by getting the exercise and the sleep, they get the focus, they get the, pro it all falls into place. Your muscles, your bones, this is what you were referring to, Hanae. Your sugar, we talked about sugar last week, digestion, your heart, your lungs, cancer, skin, your eyes, social and fun. Again, I went quick. It's all in the show notes. You can see those one by one. The bottom line facts, physical activity is the number one way to avoid all chronic illness. One of the top 10 causes of mortality on the planet, second only to smoking as a risk factor. 60% of the population gets less than 30 minutes a day, and we don't have time not to. Phyllis, did you want to add something? Unmute. Oh, sorry. Uh, hey. can, I play, can I play the devil's advocate? Yep. Please do. Example, in a webinar, uh, this is not me, but... Um, as a corporate person, I can say, oh, I, I'm spending all day at work and I wake up very early and there's no time to exercise. Uh, so what are you saying? <laughs> so what could be the um, recommendation or motivation? Oh, it's for great for question. People? Great question. Um, Ellen knows this argument. One of my biggest arguments is right now I'm exercising because I'm standing up. I'm already getting my step count because I'm standing up. The number of C-suite, CEOs, CMOs, CHROs, I have got standing at work and doing standing meetings, yay, Nicole is here, is phenomenal. That's where you can start. Absolutely start there. So it's, it's, it's not easy, but you can do it. Welcome, Nicole. Nice to have you here. Thank you. Sorry, I'm late. I just was on another call. So. No problem. No problem. We're recording anyway, so you can listen to the beginning. We've just done a little bit of a deep dive. You look like you're a runner. We've done a deep dive on physical exercise. We're delivering this workplace, this for the workplace, and we're on the facts. Why move our bodies? So let's move on here. This is what is recommended. Again, it's all in the show notes. You can look at those later. Recommended 10,000 steps a day. Cardio flexibility and resistance are what are recommended. Again, 
I would encourage everybody do what works for you. Number one, get standing up in the office. That's the number one thing, especially for busy CEOs. Funny thing is, what I've noticed with the C-suite is they tend to be the people that travel the most as well. The more they travel, the more they get steps. They think they're not exercising because they think exercise. Don't think exercise. Think movement. Think moving your body. And even if it's 10 minutes, five times a day, that's enough. We're not in the gym. We don't have to be in the gym here. There are ways of getting exercise and movement, physical movement, with all those benefits that are not meaning you have to dress up and go to a gym. That's the main message we wanna get, Fides. Again, Nicole, interrupt anytime, anybody, questions or anything. We are gonna go fast. I think that is so, such a great point because you know, I'm in fitness as well as the health part. And you know, I even try to get people to think of things consistently. I'm also like incorporating travel and when people travel, I wanted them to not only feel as if they had to go to the gym as far as getting something in. When we do excursions, we're walking, we're moving. When we're, you know, going to the beach, you could do simple things. And I try to get people from the mindset because I do feel as if when you think fitness, it only has to incorporate something high intensity in the gym where you can think of fitness in different ways. Uh, you know, I had a client that was like, oh, when I go over to my family's house, I eat so much and I eat wrong. I said, but you have a nephew who's two. So why don't you incorporate playing games with them, like red light, green light, one, two, three, or things that make you move your body so you can do the best of both worlds. You can eat, you know, and, you know, fellowship with your family, but then you're also moving your body. And if we can get the concept that you don't just only think that moving and being active is at the gym, then people will be more consistent in doing it. And I try to encourage start with 15, 20 minutes a day. Sorry to- Oh, Nicole, you, uh, you have just taken five minutes of my time. I don't have to say it. We are so aligned. And I so appreciate what you said there because it came from you and not from me. You are so right. And again, Felice, with what you just said, it's so easy to say, I don't have time, but rethinking, it doesn't need to be a separate gym. You yeah. can take a colleague and grab them and do a walking meeting. You can stand up in the office like we're doing now, but being creative about these options, it's a non-negotiable because ultimately, what's gonna happen is it's gonna help you sleep better, reduce your yep. stress, you're gonna be more productive and be more energetic the day, the next day and have more time. So it's actually a really um, double-edged sword. And I, I, I used to I travel with my corporate job, I'm not before COVID. And one of the things I wear ankle weights all the time. So I would tell people <laughs> to put the ankle weights on when we go to the Good airport idea. and just walk in the airport. Like when you go into your flights and things like that, and for us, especially when we started to, to a transition of being more working from home, it was, you know, sitting down so much. So we would do little challenges. You know, I said, companies back in the day used to have the 15 minute mandatory break time for a reason. And a lot of people have gotten from it because we work from home and we give everything to these companies. So if you just take the time and put it on your calendar, it says, okay, time to get up and then we can even do a challenge, incorporate. Like I just try to make things where it's fun, where you don't feel like, oh, I have to change my clothes. I have exactly. to you know, get, you know, get ready to be ready for the gym. But then it's things that you can do that may not exert as much, but you're still burning. And, then put your, and, I, and I also, if you're an Apple person, I tell you to put your watch on other, just so you can see throughout the day how much you're moving. And they would also tell you, hey, are you still doing things? Because then I would give you a little reminder of, oh, I need to stand up or I need to move mm -hmm. around. So In fact, I that's, that's so going to be one of, the key, one of the key takeaways of, of this piece on physical activity for people in the workplace is going to be wake up and at least observe what you're doing. So let's move on. I'm not going to spend a lot of time. It's all in the notes of the slides. We're going to ask people, what is cardio? And we explain what cardio activity is. Again, I'm not going to spend time reading through the slides. I want you to acquire what we're communicating in the workplace. Then we're going to look at what cardio improves. 
coaching moment here would be asking them, what does cardio improve? And they would give us answers. And then we would look at the answers. We would discuss the answers. What is a cardio example? And we would give them examples of cardio exercise. Then we would take maybe uh, tips on cardio and we would walk through the tips. And then we would do the same thing for flexibility. What are they? What does it improve? Flexibility examples. Again, I'm not here to teach you guys this. I'm here so you can take this fly deck and run with it. These are examples of flexibility, flexibility tips, resistance exercise, resistance improves. Nicole knows all this by heart. Resistance examples resistance tips, and then we have our coaching opportunity. Again, we could have stopped after each one of those sections, explored with the people, what do you do, what do you not do, setting SMART goals. That's completely up to you. Sometimes you do it after cardio, after flexibility, after resistance. Sometimes I do it at this moment. We could stretch this out into a 10 minute to a two hour session very, very easily. And at the end of the session, everybody walks out with their personal goals, as Nicole said, that work for them to nudge forward just a little bit in terms of physical movement. So that's the opportunity in terms of physical exercise. And I end it by saying, these are the tips, just do it. And I give lots of, you'll see at the end, I give a whole workbook that they can work with. Um, but then we give them recommendations here. And again, tweak this for yourself. Use the tips that work for you. I've given some great hyperlinks here, free apps that people can download, et cetera, free online workouts. I found all of those during COVID. But again, you can adapt this to your local audience. If you're working with the C-suite, if you're working with a big company, small company, working moms, whatever, you can adapt this. The point is, just do it. So we kind of end the bit on physical activity. We've really linked it, Nicole, you missed that part at the beginning. We've really linked it to stress and we've linked it to all of the stress hormones and what, they, what are generated under stress. So just, I wanna stop right here before we get into sleep and relaxation. Any questions about the physical movement bit? Did that seem clear to you all? Ellen, go. Yeah, the content was fantastic. I think that that's great. From I'm just curious, like when you play with it, have you started sometimes with the order of let's talk about like really briefly about stress, then the physical, yes. and then more like a bigger yes, so that it really yeah. that's yeah, what I do. Support creating, yeah. Yes. Okay. And if we do it as a program where we mm -hmm. had the nutrition week last week. Yeah. And then this week, I actually start by opening up about nutrition, reminder about the stress. We re bring it all up again. How did that go? How is the stress level? We discuss stress. Sometimes I deliver this as a standalone. So I do the right. full deep dive on stress that we all did last week. And yes, that way, when we talk about cortisol, adrenaline, all of these hormones, they're like, oh, gee, I never knew that that was linked to weightlifting. I mm -hmm. never understood that. So definitely, yes, Elena, I do. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, it's really great. Uh, I just I just really loved uh, that message of yeah. really that people make that link, that connection to food, to exercise. And I'm amazed the number of times people come to change their career or to reassess their career and they don't realize that actually the reason they're struggling is because they're not well in their bodies. They're not sleeping. They're stressed. We'll see that now about the sleep and relaxation. They're not moving. So they're not sleeping well. They're focusing on a job and making money. I work with a lot of people in career transition. And once we get the body right, like it falls into place. It's amazing. Yeah. Just like amazing. Foundation. Yeah, I agree. It is. Yeah. And I, you'll see why I start with nutrition last week, this week, physical activity and sleep, which we're going to go into now and relaxation. And you'll see why I chose that order. I would, I would love for somebody to challenge me on that order afterward, because I'd be interested to see if there's a thought process there. Right. 
Yeah. Um, Tamaso, this is a great uh, business case for you. <laughs> when Helen just shared that story of how it can like employee retention is what came to mind for me, Helen, when you share that. Right, because we're with this content, you're supporting people to just have a solid foundation. And these, you know, the the bigger problem that they're thinking, um, that may not be the case. No, um, in fact, you know. and and this again, this is for Tomas. So I'm sharing this with you because I believe we have a similar corporate audience. When I run this for the C-suite, I call it walk the talk. Mm, I call it walk the talk because to be a powerful leader, to be well in your job, to be purposeful, you have to be well. And how many of them are not setting the example for their people? They are online 24 seven. They are traveling. They're not eating well. They're overweight. They're stressed. They've got, they're burning out. That's where all the burnout happens. And this is how we address it. This is where we start. There is a wonderful article I'd be happy to share with you, Harvard Business Review, The Corporate Athlete, where we talk about the managing skills. Do do any of you know the corporate athlete model? That sounds very familiar, yeah. Harvard Business Review, the best corporate executives start with the base, which is their physical well-being. And it's only after that that they can actually focus and address and be a good leader. So using it as a walk the talk message is very powerful. And you don't need to be a nutritionist or a gym coach. You could be, that gives you other skills, but this gives you enough business case and grounding to to, to, to then go further with your coaching. Mm -hmm. Cool. All right, I'm gonna move on guys. Sleep, relaxation, and routines. This is the third pivot. My cat, sleep, this is the wonderful quote. Sleep may be more essential than food. Animals die of sleep deprivation before starvation. All right, so why am I treating this third? We taught nutrition first, then physical activity, then sleep. This slaps people in the face. So I'm gonna do a little quiz here, you guys. I'm asking you, and just feel free to open your mics. We're a small group. What percentage of adults globally report they don't get enough sleep? I would say 70. Oh, how much? 70, 70. yeah. I think so too. Okay, 51% globally. What percent make up for sleep on the weekends? Same. 80. 80. How many less hours per day do we sleep since 1942? Two. One and a half. What is the percentage of decrease in performance, alertness, executive functions, memory, and speed? 50. 30. Quite close. Percent increase in injury. 40. 60 percent of all car crash accidents and injuries associated with sleepiness. 40. 20 extra calories consumed per day. Oh, I see the answer is there actually. Uh-huh. 300 to 450 extra calories consumed a day. We're starting to see the link between sleep and food here, guys, right? That's eight kilos a year, creating 5% of the obesity in adults is due to lack of sleep. Incredible, right? In Switzerland, it costs 1.5 billion, Germany 60, UK 50, US $411 billion lack of sleep. 11.3 work days lost in productivity Leaders don't know this. They don't know this and they don't teach their people sleep. Over 100,000 deaths per year in the US alone attributed to medical errors due to sleep deprivation. Less than eight hours a night increases risk of every medical condition known to man. And less than six hours a night increases mortality by 13%. All of these are in the show notes. HB, show notes, I'm calling them. HBR, Harvard Business Review, calls sleep deficit the performance killer. 
executives looking to find themselves, be more powerful. They just need to go to bed. They need to sleep. Ariana Huffington has an excellent book on this. Leadership fails, charisma, motivation, empathy, expressiveness, ethics, and altruism, all affected by sleep. 60 to 90 minutes more a night is enough. It's a two-way street. The more I'm stressed, the less I sleep. The less I sleep, the more I'm stressed. Because sleep affects hormones. We think back to our hormone stressors there. Cortisol is produced when you sleep. You don't sleep, you cannot react to stress. Your hormone will be mixed up. Your hunger hormone called ghrelin is produced when you sleep. You don't sleep, you don't know when you're hungry and when you're full. You eat randomly. Your satiety hormone telling you when you're full enough produced in sleep. Serotonin, we spoke about your happy hormone is produced at night. And I put in parentheses, it's interesting. Serotonin is produced in the digestive tract. So we're again, if you, your digestive tract is not in order because you're not eating well, you cannot even produce your serotonin properly. So now we're linking back to the stuff we learned in nutrition last week. Melatonin, your night day body clock. Can anybody on the call tell me a little bit about melatonin and sleep? This is really important. Anybody knows about melatonin and sleep? What I know is that uh, af actually after a certain uh, hour, you're not supposed to, or it's not recommended to, to be in the screens or like to be, to put a lights that are, are really like intense just because you're uh, reducing your melatonin, your like the, pro the production, I guess. Yep. Absolutely on the spot, Hanai, congratulations. Nicole, anything to add here? Or anybody else for that matter? No, I think they, you guys summed it up. Cool, all right, this is the thing. Wherever you are on the globe, as a human being, in the morning when you wake up, it's what we call blue light. It's called blue light on the planet. This is why we get jet lag. The blue light creates all these wake-ups in your physical body. Your oxygen starts flowing, your heart starts beating faster. You start waking up. And this is alertness that's created in blue light. And it happens, it's really interesting, you guys. Even if you're locked in a dark closet and you're in Milano, in the morning at 5 a.m., your body starts creating melatonin. It's really cool. Our body knows this wherever you are. That's called blue light. And in the evening, wherever you are on the planet, it's called red light. Your melatonin starts closing down. And very gently, your body gets ready for sleep. Your heartbeat goes down. Your digestion slows down. All of these things get ready for sleep. But as Hanai said, Every screen, every phone, and every bright light creates a blue light melatonin. So the problem is we're creating blue light at night when our body's trying to shut down. So it starts interrupting our sleep, which is why I've just done my certification in digital well being, because having a phone even just in the room off messes with our melatonin. So we should have no screens and every leader needs to know they should not be confronting any screen time as of eight or 9 p.m. because it changes the quality of their sleep. So it deregulates that melatonin hormone. Okay, moving on. These are four questions to know if you get enough sleep. Great questions for leaders. Again, maybe you just wanna walk away with these and use these for your coaching. Do you wake in the morning without an alarm? Can you stay awake in meetings no matter how boring? When you end your day, is it easy to stay awake until bedtime? Do you sleep the same on weekdays and on holidays? Great little short quiz. Now, the tips, they're going to be linking nutrition with sleep. I'm not gonna go through the tips, but you understand we're putting our gears together here. The gears we started with week one, we link, link nutrition to sleep. 
then we're going to be linking physical movement to sleep, the kind of movement that's going to help us sleep better. Then we're going to be linking tips throughout the day to promote sleep, like prioritizing it, planning it backwards, taking breaks throughout the day. I believe Nicole was talking about that, these mandatory breaks. Are we taking them at home or not? The breaks we take throughout the day change the way we sleep at night because we bring down that cortisol, we bring down those hormones. I've put in two links today here, here, one to the Sleep Revolution, which is an excellent book by the leader, the owner of the Huffington Post, Ariana Huffington, and a very good TED Talk by Matt Walker, who also wrote an excellent book on sleep. They're both in the notes as well as the slides. Great recommendations for corporate leaders to get their prioritize sleep even before food, because if you don't sleep well, you won't eat well and you won't move well. So for me, this is like a newborn baby. If they don't sleep, they're so grouchy, they're good for nothing. This is really the core to our leadership and to our workplace well-being. Decluttering the bedroom is a huge piece of it. This image alone can, can give you an hour of coaching. This image alone in terms of the effect on sleep. Sleep tips, we look at needs, timing, and quality. And what I've done here again is I've put in links to personal quizzes people can do. I put in TED Talks they can watch. You can even imagine asking them to watch it before you do the coaching session. And then they come in and you talk through it. You say, where are you at? What did you learn? What, what can you put into place? More sleep, sleep tips throughout the day putting their thoughts on paper before they go to bed, no screen time, reading real books, taking a bath or shower, relaxation, breathing, meditation, movement. Again, there's a lot that we'll be giving in the workbook as well for people. And here we have coaching opportunities. So I'm just gonna stop there for a second and open up for questions and thoughts on this whole sleep thing. Tomas, I think you have a question. No, Ellen, I, I want to tell you that uh, I am sorry, but I have to leave because at five, I have a session. No and problem. So my question is, I will look to the record, uh, recorded session. Perfect. Of the week one and also the week two. Perfect. And, I will uh, send you the link. Ah, okay. You will send me the link. Yes. And, then, and I know Felice needs to leave early as well. It's no problem. And then I understand that there are two more uh, yes. sessions, week three and week four. Exactly. Exa same time, same place. Week three will be all around, like I said, purpose, alignment, feedback, yes, gratitude. When, when uh, are supposed to be? Uh, sorry. Uh, Next the Thursday day? and the Thursday after, same time. Ah, so always this on Thursday. Yep, it's, it's month. The next yep. week. Okay. Absolutely. And the fourth week is going to be super interesting because we'll be doing pricing and we'll look at options for rolling it out. And I'll be giving the business case for actually bringing this into the workplace. Okay. Okay. So I'm sorry. Thank you very much. Very interesting. No problem, Tomas. So we'll see you next time. Ciao. 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 Ellen, I thank you as well. And I, I know be, you told me you had to I leave I will early. be here no next week. Okay. Thank you very much. Perfect. Ciao. I'm no problem. I'll give bye you bye. the recording. No problem. I'll send it to everybody. Okay, Great. Bye bye. See you next time. Yep. So again, let's talk about this. How can we, at this point, how would you see the coaching laying out in terms of this whole sleep message? Um, I went through it fast because you can all look at the bullet points. You can all take the time on those. I can go back to anything at this point. Physical exercise and sleep. What do you guys think? Well, earlier you were asking us like on the order. Um, so to me, I think it flows really well. And I, um, cause you're, when you get to sleep, you're linking it back to exercise, you're linking it back. So, and it gives it a revisit. 
Um, and I'm sure if you change the order, you could probably make it work as well. Uh, but yeah, for me, the way you're presenting it, that order flows really well. Mm-hmm. Um, and for the coaching opportunity, earlier you had a slide with like the four questions. Um, yeah, so I could see like if you're in person giving someone like a worksheet with those four questions and maybe um, after you go through this section, like what's the next easiest step for you to improve your sleep like and so where are you now and where where do you want to be in terms of your sleep what's the gap right and just having them reflect like wow like because these are really great questions to kind of establish where they are on the radar if that's fair to say and then get clear on the gap and lots of you know neat takeaways and you know if they could leave with one or two things that they they feel is realistic you were talking about smart goals earlier um you know maybe working with them so yeah you could you could spend lots of time on totally on yeah i could really stretch it and i love Actually, that i'm going to show you guys now because as you know again i sort of and i'm, I'm going to come back i'm going to let everybody have a chance to talk here but let me show you the workbook that we send them home with because I think that'll be useful to see the tips. So again, and then Nicole, you haven't seen this slide yet, but this is where we start with food, activity, sleep, and mindfulness. We do a little breathing exercise at the beginning. We talk about this as like four gears of your well-being, and they all work together. So now we really understand how they all work together. And then I, I come back to the beginning. Did you discover what you wanted to discover? And then they walk away with some takeaways. So of course they get the slide deck and they get a recreation book, which I'm gonna show you guys now. So the recreation book is here. This is what they walk away with. And it's got a little personal note from yourself explaining their workbook. And then actually they've got a little, the same wellness wheel we looked at last week where they have nutrition, movement, sleep, and mindfulness as the four quadrants. And they're gonna assess themselves. And we give them the questions for movement. These are the questions they might ask to assess their movement, to assess their sleep. How often do I? They can assess it, okay? And the same thing for relaxation. They can assess where they're at. And as you said, these are great coaching tools. And you can flip these. You can use them during the session. You can send them home with this workbook. Um, And the same thing for sleep nutrition. How often are they doing this? How often do I limit alcohol to one glass? How often do I limit my caffeine, blah, blah, blah. How often do I eat small balanced meals, Um, et cetera. And the same thing for sleep movement tips. And they've always got the wheel they can assess. And then have I checked with the doctor? And this is important in the workplace that they identify if maybe they have a problem, a sleep problem. And I give them a bonus, which is calming an overactive mind. And I think there's one more, yeah, a tactical calm night practice. So those are really, and mindfulness. So those are really just bonuses that they walk away with. So that just kind of gives you a full picture of all the materials that are in this. So again, I'd love to hear Nicole and Hanai, how you see using this. I think this is awesome. I think, you know, I was one of those people um, with Hannah that struggled with um, trying to figure out how to communicate and and the different aspects and bring it together um, and make it your own. So I think this is, you know, awesome tool and, you know, getting people to relook at how important sleep is because people, a lot of times say, you know, we could do it later, I can catch up. That's why it was interesting to say that, oh, on a weekend I could catch up. It's really difficult to do so mm-hmm. and how it really um, impacts your day. And I yeah, listened no. to le- last week about stress and, you know, majority of my, you know, my target is usually, you know, women over 35 moms, mm-hmm. especially mm-hmm. Um, professional moms. And a lot of times, and, but I also in the corporate world because I liked it so much and heard the same thing even when I my colleague that everyone is super stressed Mm -hmm. and don't know where to begin and never really have the time to think about that it's their you know taking time for self-care how important it is and moms especially really negate that that opportunity to take care of self before anything 
So um, this would be very helpful just trying to configure it and um, guide it to the target, whether it's you know professional women um, or um, just my, you know, the people in my friend group type of ages, 35, 40 up, that just a lot of times they are professional, they are um, working moms, and they just can't find the time to do anything for themselves and can't realize why they are always tired. And oh, stressed. It's so true, Nicole. And you're right. I have developed this in the workplace, but I have delivered this to women's professional organizations. I have delivered it to moms and tots groups because as you said, that stress factor is the same. And I've linked stress to all of these sessions. So I'm not walking in the door saying, I'm gonna give you a nutrition class or I'm gonna teach you the ABCs of physical activity. We mm -hmm. go in saying, let's find all of the things that are gonna help reduce my stress. And I find that linking these together um, between, and, and next week is the last piece where we're gonna identify values and strengths and those things that actually drive us in our day mm -hmm. and how that affects all of these four. And I, I, I actually put it together as a program. And you can imagine, you can deliver it in an awareness session and then it gets you mm -hmm. individual coaching clients or, right. and you can even cut them down. I've actually done it as short, 45 minutes, nutrition, activity, and sleep, almost 10, 15 minutes each with just the highlights. And then they go home with the workbooks, but it's enough to get them. They, they've got to understand these gears. That's why I came back to this slide and you'll see next week, it's actually the alignment of all the gears. Because if you're really not aligned with yourself, none of this even matters. So true. Mm. So true. Super interesting. It's very, very practical, very pragmatic. And each person's expertise, you know, whether it's Ellen's expertise, she's a, she's a, a physical therapist. She works in, um, um, she's an OT, occupational therapist, actually. So she really knows the body very, very well. You seem to also be quite a health coach. Are you a health coach, Nicole? I'm a little bit of both. <laughs> Great. Okay. So a little bit of both. You've got those skills and Hannah, as well as a health coach, um, Tomaso is an executive coach. So whatever you're bringing to the table, this just gives you the support and the structure. It's simplified, isn't it? It's simplified. But it's so well done. Great. Yeah. It's yeah. So it's... well done. Well, actually we did, we called together the IIN and <laughs> we, we were discussing this together like I somehow IAN is super good like providing all the material but I feel like yeah okay but then I need to start coaching this people yeah, yeah. I need to get these clients or whatever and I don't feel confident enough to because I'm always thinking oh I don't have the all the knowledge that it takes to 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 tell someone yeah I don't know this and that's why I feel like this this course is perfect because it gives like the exact like not like no not so much information but not less just the exact thing so people are like oh wow okay yeah yeah and and let me show you guys so what i've done because you know we're we're a cozy group here under each slide you're going to find the links here to where that information comes from so if you're feeling a little bit doubtful about something you can always find the information here, I, I've tried to put always numbers of links for you to have a quick look ahead of time. Um, again, here, why I move my body. I mean, and they're usually global references, not American. They're usually global and the sleep ones as well. And I try to give tons of takeaways for people so that they can, you've got all the resources there. You don't need to be an expert. You need to be really good at coaching people. And, and you know what? If you're individual coaching, like you said, honey, you can pull out slides. They love that. You, yeah, 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 for you, sure. You I mean, I would, feel, I would feel 100% more confident if I have something uh, that they give can... them. Yeah, like a handout. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it is, it's quite, um, it's quite interesting to be able to do that. And you can use this, you can break this down. Like in when I give a short workshop, I stop the physical activity section here at this slide at the, I don't go into cardio da, 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 unless they, if it's a 45 minute session, I don't have time. I give them this slide. I give them this slide and I give them this slide. And then I say, what are you going to do with it? 
that's an awareness session. And then I get coaching clients and I work with them one by one. So you can really play with this as you wish. Who else? Ellen or, or Hane, anything else to add here? Thoughts? Yeah, what I noticed about this, the sleeping thing is that, um, well, and, and now I think it's a global problem, the, the, the thing with the phone, you know, like, because mm -hmm. it's like everyone, I mean, of course, we are, we are coaches and well, we're a little more conscious still, even if I'm conscious, I'm sometimes finding myself like uh, scrolling through mm -hmm. stuff before going to bed. And I realize how much this really affects my sleep. Mm. And when I when I try to do like a, a like a night routine where I'm like, OK, let's turn off all the electronics. We're also trying to leave all the phones and, and, and laptops and everything in one room and sleep like like no nothing electronics and how it really changes. Like sometimes I, I have either I notice that the nights that I have nightmares or, or that I mm. somehow feel like I'm not rested are the ones that I'm usually on my phone or I watch a movie before or I did something yeah something that it's uh, not I'm gonna share something with you guys I'm so glad you shared that Hanai I have just completed my um digital well-being certification I'm going to share a statistic with you which for me this one blows my mind let me show you this one this statistic Look at this. So what we're looking at here on the left is working memory capacity. And on the right, we're looking at fluid intelligence. These are two things that determine focus and memory in human beings. On the left hand for working memory, we're putting the phone. So the lowest one is the memory capacity when the phone is on your desk. In the middle, it's when the phone is in your pocket or in your bag. And on the right, it's when the phone is in the other room. That is what happens to you even if the phone is turned off. The mere presence of the smartphone changes your working memory and your problem solving ability. It's like double when the phone is in the other room. Fluid intelligence, the same thing. It's double when the phone is in the other room. And in terms of sleep, it's not just because of the blue light. It's because the mere presence of the phone in the room doesn't let your brain relax. It doesn't let your brain slow down because you're always thinking, oh, it might ring. It might do this. I could get a message because it's present. This blew my mind. And wow. when you share this with Corporate individuals, they say, oh, no, I'm great. I'm sleeping great. I'm doing this great. And as you said, Hanai, when they remove it for a week, we're, and it's funny because I'm doing a post on that next week on LinkedIn, I do not call it digital detox. That is useless. We cannot detox from digital. I call it a digital dilute. We need to dilute it and create it spaces in our day dedicated to that and only that. And that allows us to be more productive and more focused and more mindful in everything we do. So this actually in my new signature program, I've added on a fourth webinar on digital well-being and I wrap it up. So I do nutrition, activity, sleep and digital. I can't share it because if you're not certified in it, you can't know that, you know, it's where the other things you're certified as a health coach, you're fine. That's so like wow, so mind blowing, <laughs> right? So even like in the in the next yeah, and then and, and we are always with the phone every time. It's I know, so hard. Yeah, I know, I know. So, um, what else do you? What else do you guys? Um, yeah, this is super interesting. So, what else were some other big takeaways for today? I can actually stop sharing sharing my screen, or anything else, any information I can share with you guys you would like because we're at 5.15, because I didn't go into too much detail there. Is there anything you'd like me to go into further detail with that we didn't cover in the time that we had today? So what, what, what do you do when people are saying like, for instance, yeah, I don't, I don't have enough time to, to sleep. Like, mm -hmm. like that they, they're either, 
I have some some like I try to to make my my friend one one friend that she's super stressed and she's always working a lot and stuff like that. Um, and I told her, well, you need to prioritize that. But some people are just like, no, I need to I need to work. You know, I need to finish this. Otherwise, no one is, is doing it for me. And it's just that I I wonder how one can approach these people that are really like stubborn in a way like no i need to <laughs> i cannot sleep more than eight or nine hours for instance mm -hmm. ellen do you have any thoughts there coach approach find my unmute yeah with such a beautiful segue to have that coaching session um, and I, I find what's challenging when you're in a group is managing questions that are personalized, right? Because I almost want to take that person and have like an hour coaching session <laughs> about their situation. So I think it leads to a question I have for you, Helen, like when you're doing this in groups, how do you deal with a question that feels, you know, like it's a really personalized question and you know you're, you know, have a set time and you're not going to be able to do a deep dive. How do you address those? Usually? Well, what I do, I don't know if you noticed in the last slide, I always offer a free minute discovery session. So mm -hmm. I offer it post workshop. I say, if you guys have personal questions or specific questions you'd like to address personally, let's do a one on one afterward. And I always offer that free of charge. What I would be interested in with the person that is convinced that they don't need more sleep. I would actually start by sort of figuring out where the time does get spent during the day. Mm -hmm. And I would actually have them sort of say, oh, well, that's super interesting. So let's work backwards. Like, what is your day? Like how many, much time do you spend? Doing? And they're gonna say, well, I don't know. Like, I'm too stressed. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm like, okay, well, that might be the, 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 the goal for week one. Let's just get a feel for where we're at. And what usually happens, Hanai, is just by writing it down, and you've probably noticed this yourself, Nicole, if they're right, like their food or their activity, if they just, their only goal is just to write it down this week or to record it on an app. And I give them an app to do that on. And I say, let's just, let's just see where you're at. When they realize where they're at, they come back and they go, oh, I really need to work on that. It clarifies itself. So I kind of flip it around. And, and it's never a judgment call. It's always about where are you at? Let's just figure this out. And, and in fact, your stress, what, what, what is the effect you want to get out of not being stressed? And they're going to say, I want to have more time with my family, with my kids. I want to eat better. I want to, I don't know, whatever it might be. Yeah, and it's tapping into those things. So how can we do that? How can we, what needs to change? And you kind of flip it around for them. What needs to change to, so that you can actually do that thing? Because being stressed, it's like normal. We saw a caveman was even stressed. We had, we all, it always makes me laugh, you guys. This is between us coaches. When people say, oh, we're more stressed than we've ever been. I'm like, what are you talking about? Caveman, like he didn't even, he died by 25. Okay, that was real stress. I mean, give me like a mammoth, give me famine, give me, I got to fight for my food. That's stress. Okay. We're stressed because the washing machine overloads or because I have too much work. I'm like, don't tell me where we're, we are made to, to manage stress, but there are things that we manage better than others. Caveman slept all the time. They slept in a group. They slept together. They slept multiple times throughout the day because they knew that if they didn't, they would not survive tomorrow. They would sleep together to save themselves. It was their saving grace, actually. They didn't need, they didn't need the gym. They were getting enough gym out there. Yeah. I think it's worth, it's worth, you know, really coming to reality about this. So I think, Hanai, again, coaching is about turning it around to them and saying, why is this important to you? On a scale of one to 10, where can we start on this, on this adventure? And what makes sense? You're right. You tell that person you got to sleep. They're not gonna. That, that's that. That doesn't help them. They know that, but they have to come to that. Ellen, please share. Yeah, I was gonna say it goes back to those reflective reflective questions that you've got built in there, right? And really supporting them. I think that's our role whenever we're doing rolling out these workshops in a in a room. To me, it's such a success if I can help 
someone become aware, oh, I didn't think this was an issue, but maybe, mm -hmm. right? And, it, and if it's, we're able to give that example that you gave, like gave them an exercise that is of no time, it's going to be less than five minutes in your entire week to monitor this. But let's just do entertain me if you will and I'll always do it as a request you know you can accept you can reject or change the terms because I never want to tell anyone what to do rule number one in coaching yep. um, and so I'll, I'll just spin it that way and I'll say you know I'd like to invite you to pay attention to your sleep and here's how some people do it some people like this have some people do this some people you know just old-fashioned right in their agenda what would be if you accept this challenge what would be a way for you to track your sleep and I'll invite them to pay attention we had an, a client just a week ago, actually, and she was she knew she, for her, she knew she wasn't sleeping well, but she wasn't paying attention. Is it falling asleep or is it that I mean, of. Too often, right? So she she wasn't clear on that. When I asked her, how long does it take you to fall asleep? She wasn't sure. So we just did an awareness exercise to see where it is in that sleep cycle. So because when you come aware, I always say when you become aware, you've just put your finger on it, mm -hmm. then we can do something about it. Then yeah. it's like those stages of change. I go back to the stages of change. Exactly. But, yeah. And, but for me, yeah, it's, it's managing that when you're in a room full of people and you're, you know, it's much easier to dive deep. And that's where my comfort is dive deep one-on-one -on -one mm -hmm. versus when you're, you've got that room, but I think you've got lots of worksheets and I like the invitation Mm -hmm. to do a 20 minute intro. Yes. Uh, one -on -one. yes. And more. yet what also really works well in a group, like I can imagine Nicole with your moms, you know, to say, okay, mm -hmm. we're going to meet again next week in this moms and tots group. And, and none of them are sleeping well because the babies are waking them up. No. So, you know, whatever. But, but again, no. to sort of say, okay, I want you each to find an accountability partner within the group that's here today. And I want you to talk with each other, what works well, what doesn't go well for you this week. And they actually inspire each other. Yeah. What, you know, whatever that's, whatever's driving them. And if it's corporate women, like, you know, what, what, what is their dream? What is their envy? What are, what are they really, where do they want to go with this? And always, you know, Hannah, it's really the beauty of coaching is being able to say, okay, I don't have to answer this question. No. I have to give her a means to become aware. So actually flipping it around, think what's going to be useful for her to recognize that? Because she's blocked. She's got a limiting belief right now. How can I have her see her limiting belief? Yeah. The, the, I, will, about it. I will never yeah. forget one of the most powerful coaching sessions I had ever was a six minute session. Wow. Marcus Bird would love me, Ellen. Yeah. Thailand. Imagine this, 23,000 employees. I'm speaking with the CEO, 23,000 Thai employees, mid-COVID. Thailand and COVID, insane, okay? Mm -hmm. They had no vaccines. They had nothing. They literally had to set up beds in the factory so people wouldn't leave, okay? So he had 17,000 17, employees he had in there. And he came late to the call. And he came late to the call. And he said, I am so overwhelmed managing my 17,000 people. I'm so sorry, Ellen. I'm so sorry I'm late. And he went on and on about his stress. And I said, Ozzy, I said, do you want to have the call? Do you want to put up? No, no, no. I need the call. I need the call. I said, how long do you have? He said, I have no time. I said, I know you don't. And I said, what's, he said, I'm not sleeping and I'm not moving. I'm not. And literally that's the, that was the biggest one. I said, I said, Ozzy, I noticed you're sitting down. He said, well, yeah, I'm at my desk. He said, I want you to grab that cardboard box next to you. I want you to put, this is the one, Ellen. I want you to put it on your desk. I want you to stand up. I said, I want you to stand up at your desk. I said, can you put your shoulders back? He put his shoulders back and he stood up. We took deep breaths. I said, how often can you do this? He's like, I can do this 12 hours a day. I said, done. Are you willing to do that? Can you do that? He said, yes. Within three days, his, he was sleeping. Within three days, he was getting his steps. Within three days, he didn't have a sore back anymore. It literally took five minutes to raise the awareness because he took that pause, stop STOP that we looked at, yeah. and it, it just gave him that awareness. And then he ran with it. No problem. I didn't coach him. He coached himself. Flipping it around to their situation, jumping in, not thinking about what do I have to do? What should I should do? What is the Take that Amazon box and stand up. Done. Great story. Great yeah. story, right?
It's a great story. He's still <laughs> looking for that session. <laughs> Yeah. 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 We're we're here to to show them actually to be a reflection and to show them they have the answers for sure. Yeah. Sometimes it can be obviously overwhelming as you start as a coach because exactly like you feel like okay I need to know it or they they're gonna ask for answers and yes. it's just... and that's exactly why I've created wealth for you. That's exactly yeah. why if I can bridge that for people. I had the experience, I've delivered this in hundreds of locations and ways and manners and all, and you can create programs, you can break it down, use it individually, however you want. That's why I created it. I sent this need, this bridging that need, and I'm old enough and experienced enough to have it. So I'm really happy to share with you guys. We are coming to the end of our time. Um, I'm going to stop recording, I believe. Yeah. Let me just...